2014. So I have a baseline. I think I honestly got muscle ups like a couple months before this workout. And I think I only got two ring muscle ups. So I think it's a pretty good baseline considering how far I've gone in the sport and like where I'm at now. I'm two and a half weeks removed from having a baby. And she's super cute. And I know, you know, I know there's everybody's uh, postpartum journey is like a little different. For me, like I like to kind of have like a goal. So I think I'm just going to kind of go into it with a good attitude. I think there's a lot of pressure removed. So I'm just excited to attack the same workout nine years later and see if I can kind of get near the same score. My body feels like a noodle. Like nothing is tight. Like I felt like my fitness was better when I was pregnant at 10 months. She was um, killing it. She was snatching and clean. Yeah. I was like, I can't even hit that weight yeah. right now. So I mean, I'm just going to set up a little prayer every ring muscle up and you know, hopefully I get one because I think that's going to be the difference between the 10% and like as the season progresses, my body's going to start to come back and it's like, if I can just get through the 10%, yeah. then we'll see what, what else I can do. So not a lot of pressure, but I have like small goals so I can remove everybody else around me out like right because I'm a competitive person and so it's weird to be doing this thing that like matters without so much pressure. I think that me and Haley have really similar but different journeys. We actually did when she was pregnant all last year we were actually doing very similar exercises like heavily modified ring rows everything <laughs> strict not a lot of kipping movements and so I thought that was funny that we had really similarities uh, with our approach to programming and working out. This year has is gone a lot different than I thought. I thought by August CrossFit Games 2022 that I would be 100% healthy again, and that just isn't my story. Since switching coaches and working with a different doctor, I've found some new confidence in instilling different exercises that have just given me confidence to where I can, I can personally bring my pain level down. So I'm really excited about that. Not only that, but just working on like the mental side and the emotional side the last two years. That's been a journey in itself. One thing I've never tried as a female coach, so I was kind of, I was hesitant for a long time to do that, but it was something that was just placed on my heart, and I was like, I think I need a female perspective, and it's not like, go women, pro women, but there's just a certain connection that I've, I've felt with Karen throughout these last couple months working with her. The biggest thing for me is just finding an advocate as a coach, and that was like the biggest word that came to my mind that um, I was really looking for, not only in a coach, but just in every aspect of my life. Friendships, a husband, a loving husband that's an advocate for me, and also a coach. And I feel like I finally have all of that covered. That alone instills confidence in you as an athlete. But I think that's been like the biggest difference right there. Just feeling like no matter what, it doesn't matter what the outcome is, how the workout goes, and in any of my training sessions that someone's there supporting me and, and loves me for who I am and not what I do. I sort of saw this workout coming. We talked about it like two weeks ago. I love that it's like a little bit of everything. I love that it was nine years ago, so people that have been around for that many years have probably done it, not just in 2014, but since then. It's a really cool thing, and I mean, that's what CrossFit is, right? It's like, you start here, and then you like gradually start to get better. And sometimes you don't really realize it because you're just so focused on the now instead of how far you've come. I think it's a great test. Was I expecting it for the first one? No, because of ring muscle ups. Yeah. But if you really look at it, a lot of people don't even get to the ring muscle ups, right? So it's still a great test. So I like that the ring muscle ups are at the end. Pressure does a lot for people. People will be like, I don't want to try this really hard skill, but a little bit of pressure goes a very, very long way. And I really am a huge believer that putting yourself in uncomfortable situations uh, makes you a stronger person outside of the gym. Things that like happen in your life, whether it's like childhood trauma or 
whatever, I think being uncomfortable in the gym makes you a very gritty person outside of here. So I think for me, this workout, when I saw it yesterday, I was like, doable? That's the word that came to my mind. I was like, doable. Just like Haley, my journey the last couple of months has been up and down roller coaster wise as far as like being able to touch things and not touch things and overall like comfortability with a lot of like the barbell cycling exercises and lifting heavy. So I was happy to see power clean instead of squat clean and a lighter weight. But all these movements are usually really great movements for me. Like I love rowing, I love toe to bar, I love wall balls. For me to not be like at my best or like my peak, nor anyone's supposed to be at their open, but like it's different, it's just different this year than it is in the past. I'm like, okay, I love these exercises. So either way, like there's already confidence instilled inside of me because I know what my potential is for these exercises and where I can be. I wrote this in my journal this morning. I was like, just take care of yourself. It's not about stroking your ego today because if I want to go 50 toe to bar and broken, I could. Yeah. I've done that. I literally did that a couple weeks ago. But do I think that that's the smartest and safest thing for my body and my back? Absolutely not. What's the end goal, right? And that's being able to safely get through the open, get into quarterfinals, safely get through the quarterfinals, get through the semifinals, and then get to the CrossFit Games podium. So, with that in mind, it's split up more than what you think right now because of where you're at. Being an advocate for yourself in the middle of the workout, that's the biggest thing, right? Respect yourself. Respect. It's all about respect right now. If I saw this workout in the past, it would be like, go off the wall. So freaking hard that I get to the muscle ups with as much time as possible because that's a weaker move for me. Yeah. And it would be literally to get there as quick as I could. Yeah. Like sell my soul. That would be my normal goal because the more time, the more muscle ups. Today, that's a little bit different because my heart rate seems to just like get up there and like stay there and I really don't know what's going on and I wish I could tell you that's what it is. So for me, it's going to be like kind of like hanging out under what I know I'm capable of. <laughs> Breaking up my wall balls and break, you know, just like doing these like smaller moves, like smaller sets. <laughs> It's just not going to be worth it because really like I think that one, two muscle ups for me is going to be like that 10%. Meet yourself where you're at right Exactly. Yeah. That's, all, that's all that came to my mind is like meet yourself where you're at. I feel a little, a little removed from the whole process but in a really cool way. Like I feel like I'm kind of lifting some pressure off of me where usually I'm like I need like 12 cameras. I need anybody going I need my spot like and I'm yeah. just kind of like I don't need my knee sleeves I don't need whatever <laughs> like I'm probably wearing my belt I know what you're talking about I mean I'm, yeah I'm just kind of like going into it with a very different attitude and it's kind of nice like it kind of reminds me of like why I even started in the first place you're so much more than a workout as a competitor you just you allow this like thing that you do to consume you a lot and there's so much more to life for the past like 13 years I think this is my 13th open. I'm so all in. I think that sometimes it's okay to like step back, take care of yourself, like and accomplish other things because you get one life and I feel like if you allow this one thing to just take over, you're going to miss out on a lot of things. I think for me it's, it's both, right? Like we're athletes for a reason and we chose this career for a reason. So when we hear three, two, one, go, it's like we can't help but want to push hard. But at the same time, like I just said, it's like meet yourself where you're at. It's just important to take a step back and remember, remember why you started. I think for me last year, uh, I was trying to beat burnout. I wasn't having fun anymore. I stopped having fun. And I thought that, honestly, my career was over because I was just like, I'm not having fun. This isn't fun for me, me anymore. So I think this is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Having to do the open like this and not under all this pressure because we physically can't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> physically, yeah. there's limitations, it is, right? It is, I think, a blessing in it's disguise. I, blessing. I've noticed <laughs> over the last two days, like there have been like 10, 15, 20 announcements of athletes either going through burnout or injury. Yeah. And taking the whole year off where it's like we're we're lucky enough to like be able to be like, you know what, let's do it, let's see where we're at and yeah. you'll get there 
like on your own journey, you know? It's like you don't have to win the Open, you don't have to do all these things now. You didn't have to say, you know what? Let's just not try it all. So yeah, forget it. Yeah. yeah. I, like, like I said like before, I think it's so important to put yourself in uncomfortable situations because it makes for a really, really strong person. It's like, yeah, sure, it's easy for me to say, you know what? I just had a kid two months ago. Whatever, I'm just gonna like it's super easy for me to do that because I know I'm not where I'm at where I was at like last year it's so important I actually lost my mom I think nine years ago tomorrow oh god I'm gonna cry Shit. <laughs> but like I remember my coach being like I went through the open and my coach asking me like oh do you want to compete and I was like yeah because I think I think it's important to put yourself into those situations because it makes you stronger. I would say just super proud. I've kind of just been a fly on the wall for all of it. and People don't really see anything but the end result, just like any other sport. Court sports or football or anything, you see the product on the field, you see the product on the court. With her, you just see the scores online. You see what shows up at Wadapalooza or quarterfinals or whatever you watch, but like I get to see the day-to-day -day of every morning I'm getting up at 7, I'm getting into scripture, getting into prayer, journaling for an hour at a time, and then like recently she switched coaches, switched doctors, so implementing a lot of the stuff they do meticulously like twice a day, three times a day, any chance she gets, it's like just watching her implement that and just the commitment she has to not just this, but her own like personal growth and development is not just this year, but the last couple of years has been crazy to see. So just super proud of her development and her commitment to it. Are you going to do the work? Yes, I'm going to try. Uh, keep up with you, I guess. <laughs> It'd be cool to get to the muscle ups for me. Like, haven't been training this stuff very much the last, I don't know, six months since our season started. So my approach is just to go slower than I think I need to on the road because I think that's what most people will do, just come out hot on the road. So just try not to kill myself at the beginning. So watching Haley go through pregnancy and train through that process has been a really tough process because this is like the one thing that she loves to do. It's kind of like if someone was a pro surfer, they wake up, all they care about is going to catch waves, right? If you're a surfer, it doesn't really matter if you catch big waves or little waves, you can go catch waves. But the thing is for them, their surfing is competing at a high level. So it's not just do I want to do it or not and do I feel good enough to do this or not. They have to do it at a certain level in order to enjoy their passion. Does that make sense? She's had to put her dream on hold to do this thing that's really important to us within the context of our life and for our family. And now that Rogue's here, our daughter's name is Rogue. I think she thought because she was staying so fit during the pregnancy that the recovery would just be like that. And I will say she's recovering super fast. Like she started doing ring muscle ups two, two months removed, you know? So that is fast. Yeah. But I think she thought it would happen a little differently. And it's not just like the physical parts of giving birth, it's also like the hormonal stuff, getting her heart rate regulated has been completely different. Her engine was always a strong suit and now she's redlining like that. So yeah, it's been a struggle for her, but she's never backed down from challenges. And it, it just reinforces things that I already thought about her and I already admired about her. And it's been really cool to see her and Bethany connect because like when they first like got together, what was it like six, eight months ago, something like that? Different things going on in their life, but a similar feeling struggle, and I think they just connected with each other immediately because of that. And they're like, okay, yeah, we're gonna push each other in this way because we're both right here, right now. I am gonna do the workout. Honestly, like, I just wanna qualify for the top 10% in 35 to 39, and so getting a few muscle ups, I think will do that. I definitely know I can do that, so I'm not gonna be sitting here burying myself, trying to like, you know, vomit at the end and get like past the second row. Just like Randy said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cruise the first row, Try to turn it on during toast bar, wall ball, power clean. Have enough time to kind of recover, hit a couple muscle ups. If I get past the muscle ups and get back on the road, great. But if I don't, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. I've mean, been doing it long enough. You have your plan, really intelligent athletes like you know, like, hey, I can stick to the plan still and push it here. Like they just know themselves that well. I'm not saying I'm one of them. <laughs> I can't do what they do. But uh, like she said, like toe to bar unbroken. Yeah. 
but like right now just because she can like she might get there and be like oh I can totally do like yeah. you know 25 and 25 at yeah. least but I think for her right now it's important to have like something like a governor to hold her back a little bit
heart rate gets so high now since I gave birth. Being pregnant is one thing and that's hard. Giving birth and then being fit, that's a, that's a whole other documentary. I wanted that last one to have a pretty number, but I gotta like pray before I go, so we talk about my heart rate, man, it's tripping me out. That was, um, that's exactly what I thought. I was just trying to kind of like stay in my lane because I could start to hear her barbell clinging and I was like, you go girl, but I was also like, <laughs> chill out you don't need to get there because <laughs> really my goal was to beat myself in 2014 and i so did that and i strung together some doubles for the first time since giving birth which is like i know it seems like really small but like huge. it's huge for me and that was a, a movement that literally took me probably like i could run like a six and a half minute mile and like lift a 405 deadlift when I started CrossFit and I couldn't do a muscle up. Same. And I am not even kidding, I have a running tally of how many muscle ups I've done ever because it was the last movement that I needed to get to like be good to qualify because it was a move that just kept, kept me out. So that's a win. I'm more fit. I don't even care what happens to this season. Yeah, I think for me, like I journaled last night kind of how I wanted to set up the rep scheme and stuff and just try to stick to that. And overall, I kept to what I told myself last night and what I told myself this morning, which was just keep the ego at the door, like do what you are capable of and meet yourself where you're at. And I felt like I was able to accomplish that. So got back to the rower and once I sat on the rower, I was like bonus points for me and where I'm at. I was really happy overall with where I went. It was like Kaylee said, we already knew it was gonna be like tough cardio wise for us just because we haven't done a lot of conditioning and like hit actual CrossFit movements and workouts. And any fellow CrossFitter out there knows if you take a break for like a week from CrossFit workouts, you know how much it hurts coming back. So just think like a whole year of not doing that and how it feels. So I definitely felt my cardio, but felt like because I stuck to my game plan, I was able to keep my cardio at a minimum and not burn myself out. And pain free, that's the biggest thing. Like her win is the muscle ups. My win for me is not being in pain right after with my back. So I felt like I was able to accomplish that, so I'm really happy. Awesome. I don't want to do the open and I'm like, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want people cheering me on. And it's just like, you know, you're some of the best that. things come out of the open as much as I hate it. I get the covers. Good job, girl. Awesome.